And I'm Noah, and you're listening to A Bite Of, where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and enjoy it one nibble at a time. One nibble at a time. This is our fifth nibble. Fifth nibble of this freaking show. How many nibbles <laughs> equal a bite? How many episodes do I have to watch until I stop crying? Uh, no, well, <laughs> started on episode one, so what? None? Gonna be crying every episode. <laughs> All right. We have some announcements. <laughs> like, we posted about it on socials, but I really hope y'all are hungry. You guys want to take some bites of some things because... We decided to make ourselves very busy this week and have tons of stuff coming out for you. We have this episode you're currently listening to, the review of episode five of The Last of Us. But our Last of Us journey does not stop here. No, 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 sir, no, ma'am. No, <laughs> them, no, they. Okay. Eben Bolter, Woo. the DP slash cinematographer for episodes three, four, and five. The saddest episodes in TV history, which I did call him out on it. Oddly enough, nicest guy. Yeah. <laughs> nicest guy you could ever meet. We have an interview with him that will be coming out very shortly after this episode. So he gave us so much background information, so much behind the scenes stuff, so many whys and hows and whos and what's its galore. You do not want to miss that one. Do you want hashtag T-L-O-U, hashtag B-T-S? Then Evan is serving that hashtag T. <laughs> so look out for that one. I'm very excited for it. Can't wait for you guys to hear it. Then Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. We got that review coming out. Ah. We have a review of Nope. You guys voted. It's going to be on Patreon first. And then the masses can hear it. They, so, yeah. Yeah, they said, yup, to Nope. <laughs> They did. You know what's funny is that it was very close on some of the platforms between Nope and Bullet Train. Bullet Train. We added Bullet Train again because we thought it'd be funny. We might be adding some that we add before just to see if you guys will get it. They're like, we don't want you to watch Bullet Train. How about that? <laughs> so <laughs> No Brad Pitt for you. <laughs> so speaking of Patreon, if you like the show, want to support the show, go ahead. Join Patreon, get bonus episodes, get videos, get episodes first, all that kind of stuff. You know, uh, speaking of all that stuff, you know what one of the hottest items is right now? That adorable little abide of hotel tag that we created, that keychain. Yeah. Yeah. We sent it out to all the people that already have that tier. So if you want that as well, just go join that tier. Yeah. Follow us on all the socials. They're down below in the show description or just search for abide of. Leave a review, subscribe, all that stuff. Okay. We housekeeping stuff. Yes. Out of the way. All right. It's time for a look back at The Last of Us Episode 4. Please hold my hand. I've taken the two out. I've decided that we don't like the two. Apparently, the internet also did. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it's Wyoming or bust for Joel and Ellie as they head out on the open road in the all-American infected apocalypse road trip. Add cassette classics and hidden porn magazines for fun. Ooh. Ultimately, their route is blocked. Trying to circumvent, they go off course and are led through a rebel-defeated QZ. They're ambushed and find themselves in a shootout. In a split-second decision to save Joel, Ellie takes a shot. The pair escape, but are soon being sought after by the leader of the rebels, Kathleen. She thinks that they have been sent by her number one nemesis, Henry, and his brother, Sam, and she is willing to tear the city apart to find them. Foreboding. Cracked asphalt undulates in the basement Ew. of the building. Stop. <laughs> undulates. No. All bubble, right. bubble, bubble. Well, that was episode <laughs> four. You're caught up. Spoiler warning ahead. Episode five. Spoilers. Mm. Just, you know, go. I feel so bad. Go watch it and then come back if you haven't. Sorry we sent you to that. <laughs> Let us officially take a bite of The Last of Us episode five. Endure and survive. Uh, okay. Well, you know, such a menacing name, Kathleen. Who who would have thought the villain named Kathleen? <laughs> yeah, and you know what it else you know what you know what else it is about Kathleen is that her voice is actually like a very soft, sweet cadence. Oh yeah. Yet she's like, You're a rat, kill them all. It's yeah. like, whoa. Your informants inform. I'm like, okay. Oof. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> yeah. 
just like the presence she has and the way yeah. that they all sort of like kowtow to her. You know, there there is a piece of me that wishes that we did get to see a little bit of how she came to power there. No, thank you. I want to know. No, I mean, the glimpse that we get of her prior to the cul-de-sac scene and we see how she treated the informants slash corroborators. Corroborators? Corroborators. Yeah, I was going to Carabos Bar and Grill. <laughs> Delicious. Mm. Well, <laughs> but we saw how she dealt with those people and how she is just full violence, gives no fucks straight ahead. And she manipulates oh, 100%. Bait and switch like nobody's business. Yeah, I don't think I can handle more of her. I liked her, but I'm glad she's gone. <laughs> no, totally agree. No, I don't want to ever. I mean, we won't. I don't ever want to see her <laughs> dealing with with Joel and Ellie again, but I want to. I want a little bit of a prequel to that that QZ, and you know, was it really her role or was it really her brother's role? And then she just happened to take over when when he died. Yeah, one hundred percent was her brother's role, and then she had to take the reins, which you didn't have to. They should have had an election. Yeah, <laughs> democracy, baby. Well, I mean, I also am curious because. So much of the romantic relationships in The Last of Us, aside from some of the ones in part two, aren't explicitly said or shown. And I'm curious if Kathleen and Perry, there there are some moments in this one, particularly in the cul-de-sac, but he's just so willing to, I don't know, just appease her and do what she asks that it's a little more than just a right-hand henchman type Mm. situation. And I'm curious if there is some romanticism happening there either yeah. on his part to her or it's mutual i don't or, know you know or maybe maybe it was something that perry was her brother's right hand person lover L- oh you know i'm always pulling for that lgbtqia plus storyline baby um yeah something like that or just best friend so he feels like it's his duty to stick to kathleen Meh, best friends i don't know if i go that far like for my best friend to like kill a group of people <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's it's not good, whatever it is. You know, this whole this whole sort of storyline really gives me Hunger Games vibes. Mm. You know, the last movie when Coin's like, I know it will do. It's like, well, she kind of meets the same fate. She does. Yeah. You will see her in Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be in that one. But so Kathleen and Perry and the terrible. I mean, there's a line that I, I believe Craig, Craig Mazin said, and it's also just said throughout history. Uh, that usually the people that overthrow the oppressors are just as bad as the Mm. people that were oppressing them typically throughout history. And this is just a case in point. Yeah, it's all about power, right? It's like, even though they wanted that freedom, what did they end up doing? Freedom to do, I mean, I mean, granted, the Fedra was not great to them, but also they're murdering people. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, it's just... Bashing down people's doors and yeah, Kathleen... Kathleen is just so caught up in her grief about her brother that she's completely blind to everything that she's doing. It makes you think that people in this situation in the Last of Us universe or this type of mythos or anything that if this is who they actually are and when you're cut down to your base Mm. person that you're able to really let it show because it's again choices and she's choosing to be this way. Granted, I don't blame her for trying to place blame on somebody reasonably for her brother's death. But as we know from Sam and Henry's side, it, it's not just black and white. Like he wouldn't he didn't just sell out her brother because he wanted to because he wanted to get extra Fedra money. You know, it, it wasn't about that. So, yeah. <sighs> and that's sort of the hypocrisy of Kathleen, though, isn't it? Is that she is trying to hurt someone who hurt her brother and that person that did that was trying to save his own brother right Uh, they put these siblings to like head to head it's just so heartbreaking yeah and i think part of it is right is in the apocalypse who you're left with is all you have the last of us who's saying it (laughs) at that point and then at another point it's henry exactly though that's the thing is that that's all you have so when that the last of you are taken away, you're left with nothing except your rage and grief. Yeah, and this same, this is a a, a few steps back from where we left off in the last episode. We see 
Sam and Henry go into hiding with the doctor that Kathleen does end up killing. Mm -hmm. And we see them go up to that attic and how he painted all those things on the on the wall and everything like and, and it's. I think we needed that. We needed to see the urgency. We needed to see the desperation to get away, but also some of the repercussions from the choices that Henry made. We we needed it to fully flesh out this character a little bit. It's almost, you know, sometimes whenever we're so far into a series and we step back a little bit, it's like, oh, come on. Like we left off in such like an intense place, but. We needed to see how they got from point A to point B to Joel and Ellie. Absolutely. And I also think that we needed that time with them to care about them. Mm. You know, we really needed to live with them for a little bit. And what's interesting, right, is that I think they were in the attic for something like 10 days. But for us, it was, what, 15 minutes, if even that. But it was enough time for us to get to know them and, and, to, and to love them already. I mean, the, the character of Sam, uh, played by uh, Kayvon Woodard, is just an incredible character. Um, and he holds such power, even though he's just this, this little boy, he's, he's all of our hope, right. In that sense. Um, and I mean, nothing beats a bag of crayons either a Ziploc bag of crayons. No, <laughs> not at all. Also good big brother for taking stuff that he knows that he would love. Yeah. <laughs> but we did need that moment. We needed to see how much he cared for Sam. We needed to see that there was so much innocence and, you know, just Sam not understanding like. I'm hungry. I know there's one can of food left, but I'm hungry now. Like, mm. why can't we get this? Henry's telling him it's hard to get food. We can't just get food. But he's like, but I'm hungry. Like, I'm 11. <laughs> I need food. <laughs> but we, we, we needed to see that stuff. And then leading to the confrontation with Ellie and Joel, we get to see not only Ellie finding somebody that she can have kinship with, but then Joel seeing almost a reflection of himself, the opposite. It's like pessimism versus uh, aggression almost. Mm -hmm. And seeing how those two balance each other out, but how much they actually have in common. It's a really cool thing to see. And again, as we're moving on in these episodes, we keep seeing Joel, you know, notice these things, right? So you have to wonder if... If Joel weren't with Ellie at this point in time, when they woke, when he wakes up with the gun in his face, would he have reacted differently? A hundred percent. Right? He would have. He would have tried to fight immediately. But Ellie, in in these instances, is almost I wouldn't say like a conscience, but she's almost like an inner voice for him to be like, okay, well, let's chill out. This is what's happening. But then immediately they're able to find that common ground, and they're sharing food with them. Yeah, because he's able to see reluctantly they're, but right. yeah <laughs> but he's able to see that they're younger mm -hmm. you know he he could probably tell that they don't necessarily know what they're doing with the guns and um he kind of is able to flip that switch which he hasn't been able to do in a while yeah yeah they make that plan to get out of kansas city which seems i mean as soon as they mention tunnels i'm just like i guys the undulating pit of infected we saw it we know what's coming i know <laughs> Kathleen's like, we dead bolted the door. It's fine. <laughs> double, double dead bolted. Yeah, we did the lock on the <laughs> handle and then a dead bolt. <laughs> yeah. That'll keep them. But I, I do like that this growth from Joel, not only with Ellie, is also growing to trust people a little bit, even if it's to an ends to a means. He needs his help to get out of the city. He knows that it's almost impossible to get out, especially where they are, with everybody on such high alert looking for Sam and Henry. They go down into the tunnels. Mm -hmm. This episode, these two episodes and three, Eben Bolter did magic. It is just so beautifully shot. We see the scene of Henry and Sam when they're leaving that attic for the first time. We get that different perspective of Joel fighting inside of that store. But just... Thinking about doing that and leading it, almost doing it in real time to lead them into their paths crossing, it's just so cool. This whole scene with the contrast between, yes, it's a dark, scary tunnel and there's possibly things down here. Then they get to the mural on the wall. And then when you go in there, it's still depressing, but it does feel hopeful. You feel like something like it could have been safe at one point. Yeah. I mean, that whole room is is a really odd juxtaposition of different things right so it's you're thinking you're underground there's a tunnel but yet there's light right. coming from the ceiling uh which you'll hear about how they did that 
when you listen to our episode. Yeah. Uh, we have these drawings on the wall, but they're chipped. And we know that the people who were here aren't there anymore, but yet our quartet are there and they're enjoying the space. So, At least Ellie and Sam. <laughs> right, that's true. I mean, I don't think that Joel is ever going to really enjoy a space uh, anymore. That's the magic of Ellie, right? right? He gets to sort of see things through Ellie's eyes. And because Ellie is so young, she's fearless in that way. Uh, and she's able to kind of see the good in situations if you can. So she takes this up as an opportunity to say, let's just hang out here. Uh, so this this scene in this particular, whatever you want to call it, bunker in these tunnels is 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 one of joy and happiness but at the same time you're scared you don't know if there's anything on the other side of the door you don't know if anything's coming for them uh so you're kind of just teetering on this edge the entire time you're like yay kick the soccer ball but not too loudly yeah the, it's it begs the question of if this was safe why is it not safe anymore and <laughs> let's make it depressing more <laughs> leading up to depressing stuff all right if you saw the tiny you know, shot of the drawing on the wall with somebody called Ish. In the game, you actually find out what happens in that bunker through notes being found. You, you, you can piece together the story. This dude was at sea, became lonely. He came into the city f- to find companionship, found this family with kids. They lived down there. It was great. Those rules on the wall, they were broken. And unfortunately, bye bye. So it's sad, but. It just gives that extra layer of like, what happened? Like, why? And I, I'm curious if they'll ever tell that story, but maybe not. Maybe it's just an Easter egg that, for people. Exactly. It felt know. like a little a little present they left there for the people who played the game um, and left us wondering, for me, someone who didn't play the game, like, what did that mean? You know, they it was such a, it had its own shot, you know what I yeah. mean, of him looking at it, that it made us realize like, oh, that means something to someone. Uh, so yeah, this little, this little bunker is, is, or was once a safe space. It could still be safe if they just follow those rules already pre-written on the wall. <laughs> and at this point in time, you're, you, they're there. It's like, well, what's next? You know, it's, we have this moment. We found another comic book. Yay. Hooray. But they're still in the middle of this escape. Yeah. And we don't know what's on the other side. I love the the connection that Sam and Ellie have. They have it throughout this entire episode. And Ellie almost needs to have that connection because she is still young. She's 14. And she needs to have some type of fun and some type of hope and relating to somebody that isn't a middle-aged man that's just completely broken and hardened. <laughs> because it affects her. She had to read so many puns in order oh for to laugh. God, and it was the poop pun that Gotta really broke him. Pun. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and you know, there's also a thought of saying, ooh, is this the last time she gets to be a kid? I would say most definitely. <laughs> exactly. Because it was a whole episode of mostly that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I I mean there's so much being said as these episodes go on. It's like it's like the crumbling of Joel's facade, but on the other side of it, it it's it's Ellie putting up her own walls, you know what I mean? Blocking, losing her own childhood. It's rough. <laughs> yeah. The, I would say the first ending to this episode is complete mayhem. And it's, it's something, I don't want to say the show needed, but it needed to remind us of what this world is. Because so much, I guess the, the second episode was really the last time we had a threat of infected. And we haven't seen most of them. They've kind of been there and Ellie cut one on the head and stabbed it in the head. But it's been mostly people from here on out, which is fine. That's the story. But since it's not the video game and most of the infected fights aren't going to happen from point A to point B because they don't need to entertain us that way. They need to amp it up in a big, big way. They get to this cul-de-sac in this neighborhood right outside of their area they needed to get out of kathleen finds him they're mowing down things with that giant snow plow car plow thing goes into a building i guess there was another undulating pit in that house They're everywhere and hundreds of infected it's just such a cool scene to see that one of one of my favorite sort of poetic things that happens in this is right in the last two episodes we've seen them really rolling through town in that truck. And on the plow part of it, it says run. Yeah. And then that truck 
is what ends up breaking the pit open and then they all have to run yep. for their lives. But I don't think many of them make it. No, the the conversation that Kathleen has with Henry while Joel's up in the tower after you took out the sniper, the, the tension in that scene is a lot because you have Joel. It's like, okay, take her out. Take her out, Joel. Like, you have the shot. You could do it. But you have Henry, Ellie, and Sam having to be literally right next to this entire army. But her, her dialogue and what she says is terrifying. And it really puts into perspective who she is. Because he tries to tell her and almost sympathize with her. Like, I did that. You know why I did this. Like, I, I did it to save my brother. I killed your brother. But, like, I did it to save my brother. You should understand that. No. She, kids die all the time. What's the problem? No, I know why you did it. I'm still going to kill you. Oh, she's deranged, <laughs> yeah. people. She's like, completely lost her mind. Uh, yeah, like, when you can try and um like make that sound okay you've crossed over the bridge to you know cuckoo banana town and there's perry right next to her like go girl <laughs> he's like i got my gun you tell yeah. me when i got you <laughs> whatever you know what's even worse about this scene though is that like the one person who would be truly capable of escaping the situation is nowhere near anyone yeah he's already fine he's already up <laughs> window you're like no joel don't leave them why yeah. why 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 would he leave them yeah it's oh. it's that trope that it is as old as time mermaids it's, no oh. <laughs> oh no that's beauty and the beast that's beauty and the beast <laughs> it's the separating yes every oh. time there's separation it's like oh shit and they something. weren't even that like i mean it wasn't even for that long but you knew it was bad yeah yeah so as soon as all of all of these infected just start pouring out and the most terrifying and just sick as hell way. It, it gave me flashbacks of World War Z, but it was just different enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To where it seemed any of them, like you could point out one and be like, that one's going to kill me. That one's going to kill me. You know, like World War Z felt like just this giant mass sure. of a thing. This one was just terrifying. And then they amp it up. We might not have gotten that bloater in the school scene that everybody wanted to see before Bill and Frank's house, but we got him here. Uh. Look, it's never a good sign when infected slash zombies in a piece of media are so hungry that they knock each other down and crawl on top of each other. <laughs> that is never good. Yeah. When there's that many, I mean, that, <laughs> I mean, when that truck went in that hole. Were the infected? It created the hole. The infected were like, oh, <laughs> well, 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 there we go. <laughs> when they start, you know, bicycling their arms, like, uh, you know, there's, you could tell there's just like no more like hinges or anything. Man. Ooh, yeah. It's that bloater, so good. He, he just came out and he was like, I'm going to smash you to smithereens and then I'm going to rip your head off. I sure a lot of people have seen this online. That suit cost half a million dollars. Well. Took over an hour to put it on this seven foot tall person and it killed. It, it was so good. We're seeing another stage of the infection here. I will admit. OK, I'm just going to admit Ooh. there's something that I was curious about. Uh -huh. So this whole thing infected and how it operates is to spread this infection, not necessarily to kill, but to spread the bloater in this scene was very much just a murder machine ripping i don't even think they bit anybody they were just ripping heads off and just going in the game they have like those pustule things those almost like Ew. bulbs that they have on their body they would take them off and throw them <laughs> and like a spore bomb would go off <laughs> we don't have spores in this game but like i'm glad they didn't add that extra thing because i don't think anybody would yeah have made it i know out. like grenade Fungus pustules. I don't know if it would have uh, really translated they to almost, the show. They, they almost would have had to have tendrils or something just because they took out the spore element and had the tendrils added. So it almost would have been too much. Yeah. I, I mean, and, and I mean, in the game, do we learn how the different kind of sectors or, or levels of in? No. No. So it's just like there's clickers and there's bloaters. And because it's like, how, how does one even... How does one even bloat so much? I mean, I know what I'm like after Thanksgiving. Oh, my God. But... No, I mean, I think it's just inferred that the longer that something's infected, 
the more it the just bloatier it gets. It evolves. I don't know if it goes to <laughs> you know from regular runner slash stalker to clicker, then to bloater, then to you know giant mutation. It could, but I don't think anybody's really able to study these things. Well, no, I think you know what though. That's probably a good point, right? Because if we actually think of the actual fungus, what it does to the bean that it goes in is that at first it controls it, then it solidifies it, and then it blooms into something else. Right. So. I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I think you put the fungus under the microscope. <laughs> you got it. This this scene where everything breaks loose, we we talked about with Evan Bolter quite a bit. Uh, wait to you know, go listen to that interview. Um, I just love the shot of Joel in the sniper's nest shooting while then we also go to them on the ground. Well, then we also see through his scope. It's just the so many perspectives is so cool and really just makes the scene. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the tension is like dialed up to a million. Yeah. You're just like. Ah. But I did love that the the Kathleen soldiers just had to be like, I don't care about anything else. Like we're, we're all going to die. <laughs> I mean, and you know what part of it is, is that for so long, I think kind of along the lines of what you were saying before as us as the viewer. I feel like they had the same thing where they were so fixated on overthrowing Fedra and now so fixated on getting Henry and Sam that you forgot that there was a freaking infected outbreak out there. Right, right, right. And I think it's important for that to happen. And if it's used too much, it's too much. And if it's not, then when it happens, it's a little more exactly warmy. You get ripped in half by yeah. a bloater. <laughs> yeah, so... You know, Perry gets his head ripped off because he saved Kathleen. And that scene made that's what made me think of them having almost like a romantic relationship because I don't know. It's just the way they looked at each other was just more like, oh, no, it was the in the kissy blue. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> After his head was already off. <laughs> <laughs> the bloater has his head on the hand. <laughs> exactly. I love you, Kathleen. <laughs> Kathleen, come give me a kiss. <laughs> and then I'll rip your head off. <laughs> I want a matching set. <laughs> but we cannot talk about Clicker Girl. We can't. Kid, kid Clicker. Clicker Kid. Clicker. Kid Clicker. Kid Clicker. Kid Clicker. <laughs> clicker Girl. <laughs> but that when Ellie goes into the van to seek refuge, the creators of the freaking show decided, oh, you know who can get through the same thing Ellie did? A child. No. Let's not just make it an infected child. Let's make it a clicker child. And we'll get somebody that's a contortionist to do it. <laughs> contortionist clicker kid. I mean, it's too much. Okay, here we go. We are we should have really been making rules to how to survive this particular um, outbreak. Whenever you go through a tiny window, close it behind you. <laughs> you know, we can't blame her. But yes, she should have. No. And. <laughs> that went it, not only was it creepy because it was that kid and it came in, you're like, ah! but the immediately starts just twisting and tumbling, and it was baby tumble surprise all over again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> baby tumble surprise, baby kid clicker, clicker surprise, <laughs> clicker, 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 right before your eye, clicker, clicker, clicker. She should get a prize, baby imagine, clicker surprise. Imagine just the doll with just mushroomed head and just. And now for Christmas 2023, it's this hot selling toy. I love you, baby clicker. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, that. Yeah, they should add a little voice box to it. A hundred percent. They have to. But oh, my God. When she just tumble, rolled, twisted over the back seat, like you didn't need to show off. But I'm glad you did, because I would have been a hundred percent like Ellie and been like, nope, <laughs> get out. Nope. <laughs> I, I mean, I would have been like, uh. Simone Biles, like, this Help. child is amazing. I need, oh my gosh. 10 uh, out of 10. 10 out of 10, right? I've been scoring the child. Good job, girl. Get it. But, Ellie just like, yeah. Yes, I'd be dead. Dead for sure. I'd be like, I love you, Stan. <laughs> Ooh, she ate that. No crumbs. No crumbs. <laughs> yeah, but I would have, I, I don't know what I would have done in that situation. I'm glad she got out. I'm, I'm glad yeah. she got out. But yeah. we... We can't say that she didn't stick the landing right onto Kathleen's face Ooh. to pumble the shit out of Ooh. it. <laughs> she said, I want my meat tenderized, baby. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know what's just, just so much irony and poetic justice is that 
One of the last lines she says is, kids die all the time. What kills her? A, a child. Kid. A kid. <laughs> it reminds me of that vine. Yeah. A child. A child. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's great. It's what a way to go out. But this show, again, is just a testament to having, introducing us to characters in such a limited time. And the ending of them just almost being like, oh, you made me feel something. Well, you know, oh, gosh. Not, I, I wasn't, I wasn't sad that she died. I'm just no, no, putting but, that out there. But that's, <laughs> you know, it's, this as a property is so different, I feel like, than any other. I'm, they are all zombie things, not this one. They are all. <laughs> so, because usually when I would, I remember watching something like The Walking Dead and being like, where are the zombies? Give me the zombies. This, I'm so invested in the people on the screen, even if they're only there for two episodes, as you've seen, you forget. And then it explodes. And you're like, "Ah!" (laughs) no, I forgot. I thought this was just a family drama. Oh, no. This is a family rip your heart out, stomp on it a few times, and then probably kick you in the face. Is I... (laughs) <laughs> How is there going to be a hopeful arc at the end of there's this? There's not. Oh. Um, so, <laughs> there's not. Okay. <laughs> I think we got Kid Clicker out of our system. Comment below, do you stand Kid Clicker? <laughs> oh, I'm interested. They're all going to be like, yes. There's like, got to no, be gifts, right? freak. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Let me, contortionist Kid Clicker kills Kathleen. <gasps> ah. Wow. How's that for alliteration? C's and K's? Wow. Yeah, it's all that hard. Ka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. So, yes. No. We have to. No. We have to. I like how we've like opened up our episodes a little more. We're not going so in chronological order, but I would be just it just wouldn't sit right with me if we didn't talk about Kathleen dying. Before we talk about the second ending of this episode. Uh, let's just end the episode now so now, we don't have to talk about it. Y'all know all. what happened. Yeah. It, it's sad. It's done. <laughs> Tears. <laughs> Tears. Crying emoji, crying emoji, crying emoji. <laughs> uh, so we get a scene with Ellie and Sam. And this is one of my favorite scenes in the show just from the performances. Ah. We have Sam, who's deaf. Who has to speak through his? I I know there's a certain name there for is this. A name I know. It's like a a draw and peel or um, like a, a magic pad, magic pull ne- sheet. Uh, uh, sh- <laughs> oh, comment below. Do you know what it's called? Someone's got to know. We're not googling it. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we get this conversation with them, and as they're communicating through this pad, we start seeing Sam ask very pointed or bigger questions than you would think he would ask when they're just reading a comic book. And one of the questions he asked Ellie, like, are you afraid? Mm. And she reveals a little bit of herself. And I think she's kind of hinting at what's to come, but she says she's afraid of ending up alone. Right. Which is just for a 14 year old to say is a lot. It's heartbreaking. It's a lot. It's heartbreaking. (laughs) Your face. The way what the words you're saying and your face are complete opposites. You're like smiling and saying heartbreaking. Well, you know why? Because <laughs> I'm being honest, and also I wanted to try to make something work with um Heartbreak Hotel, the song. No. Heartbreak. No. Because oh, we checked just... into Heartbreak Hotel. I know we did, and we'll never leave. We're here forever. If we're wa- yeah, as long as we're covering The Last of Us, we are for sure checked in. <laughs> no free continental breakfast. But <laughs> Sam asks a question that I think has been brought up in this type of property before. And he asks, do you think they're still human or something along those lines? Like after they Mm -hmm. turn, do you think the monsters are still themselves? Writers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that was more along the lines of what he said. But it's an interesting concept because why wouldn't a child think that, especially a child that is like post this? So he just does it. I don't know if he's seen people that have turned or he just knows that they look like us, but they don't act like us. So what is making him do that? I think also he just saw a child gymnast still <laughs> be able to tumble. <laughs> oh, my God. She was a clicker. We're done with kid clicker. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, I think honestly, the question comes from a place of fear because he knows what's happened to him and he's yeah. afraid that he'll be gone forever. Also, what a champ. 
I mean, he walked all that way. He's not crying and he looks relatively fine. And he has a huge bite mark on his leg, which he does reveal to Ellie. And let's just like amp up them trying to make us cry or just awful when Ellie tells him my blood is medicine. Mm-hmm. And she gets the knife, cuts herself, tries to rub it on there because what I mean, at that point, what do you do? I, I don't blame her. And it's so selfless and it's so I want to protect you and I want to help you. My blood is supposed to be magic. It's yeah. supposed to do this thing that they're saying. But is it going to work? I also think there's the innocence of a child, right? Think about, I don't know, if you bre- break a plate of your mother's and you oh my glue God. it back together and you're like, they won't notice. It'll be OK. This fixed it. You know, and has like the glitter glue. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's just a complete mess. And one of the pieces is missing. But you're a kid and you're saying, no, this will fix it. This will be OK. We'll do it. It'll be fine. And it's sort of along those lines as well of her feeling like this is this will this will be OK. I got it. I got it. I could do this. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that. They decide to or Ellie decides to not tell Joel and Henry like she's really either believing or hoping that this blood will work. And what's just so sad about this one, we finally see Sam has turned into an infected is Ellie was sleeping right there. He was already turned. And by chance, I I guess because he is deaf, right? Maybe the infected wasn't able to know Ellie was there. Like he just didn't hear because he didn't react until she touched him. And it's just, man, it's it's directly from the game. Like, just seeing that scene again, these scenes that I know are happening, they just hit just as hard, if not harder, because they're actual people this time. I agree. Yeah, I think the source material is just incredible. And then it's totally, completely amped up to more human levels because humans are acting out these emotions. And it's not the end game of it being a game. Of right. being like that type of playability, this time it's more you're going to feel what this thing has been saying this entire time. And the act of, or the, the, the tension that happens in Joel wanting to go get the gun right away and just save Ellie because that's the rational thing to do. Henry doesn't act rationally because why would he? It's his brother. It's time to process that. When he does shoot his brother... And seeing what he did dealing with that. I mean, like, imagine your brother that you did all this stuff for to save. And you finally think you're safe. Finally think you're safe. Joel has been, Joel's going to take you guys in. They're going to go with you. They're going to become a, a quad now. Yeah. And the decision that he had to make in a split second, but also processing that grief and the grief of like, oh shit, like he was gone anyway. Ugh. You know what? Just. And there's also something to be said about henry as a person right compared to kathleen she couldn't see her brother being sacrificed to save someone else right right and somebody more in need and and in this scene henry is actually able to make that decision yeah he Uh, is able to let his brother go so someone else can survive yeah so he was always the opposite of yeah, a hundred percent. Always. Yeah, always, always. And unfortunately, this is the last of us, and you can't stay hopeful for too long and you can't be happy for too long. And the look, the the acting that Lamar Johnson did was is so phenomenal. I don't think I've seen them in anything else. I could be wrong, but this is definitely the first starring role that I've seen or guest starring and supporting. Is that a better word? I don't know how it works when you're only there for two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> but effective. Yes. <laughs> but the choice to, so he kills himself, but the choice to not just go to black or end the episode there or anything, because they could have, it could have been a cliffhanger. Staying on Ellie's face. That is just the extra punch because Ellie wasn't able to save Sam and now she lost two people. Right. And I also think, again, there's that conversation of, Slowly but surely, Ellie's innocence being taken away from her. So there she is again, watching another tragedy right in front of her eyes. And we're seeing her reaction to that, realizing that she's going to be an adult now. Yeah. After uh, this. There's no going back. Right. She just on the last episode really harmed somebody with a gun in a very violent way. And then this one, she loses two more people that she really 
you know, wanted to endure and survive with and it didn't work out. And we see her processing that or really, I don't know, like she's either at this point or how they're writing her, she's able to work through these fairly quickly. She's the one that kind of just, you know, ties, ties her shoes and is like, let's go. Which way is West? Let's go. But she writes, I'm sorry on his pad and leaves it on the graves that they dig, dug for, for them. And it's just such a, she knows she's guilty. Like she, you know that she feels guilty about this and man, it's so effective. The writing and just the acting, it's phenomenal. Yeah, I also want to say how, how intense just the sound of a gunshot is, you know, in these last two episodes, we really didn't see some, like we saw people holding guns and shooting people, but we never saw the receiver of the bullet feel it. Right. Even when Kathleen uh, murders the doctor, we don't see it. And in this scene, there's two just but the sound of a gunshot is so scary and so telling that we don't want to and we don't need to see the under it, other end of it. You know, yeah, the, the effect of the pool of blood from Sam instead of showing his body, which I think is in ways more effective. And I think the right choice to oh, absolutely. do. Um, but showing the blood and it cut to it a few times and just it's showing growing bigger and bigger like this is permanent. This is not like this is real. This actually happened. It's just it's so many little details that are in this type of scene that just shows the strength of this show. I very much was hoping that this was a deviation uh, from the game because it they could have. I'm I'm curious, like, I understand why they did it. I understand the grand scheme of things, why they did this. I just, like, could there have been a different way? Almost, you know? Yeah, it almost feels like when they're taking things from the game, they're only going to change it to make you sadder. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it was like in the game with, with Bill and Frank, right? Frank takes his own life and we don't even meet him. We don't know anything know about him. So so he still he still dies in the show, but we get to see his beautiful relationship to right. make it even more impactful. It made that blow like a little easier. It was like, oh, I feel sick, but then it's like a kiss on the cheek. It's like, okay. But I also <laughs> think it makes it harder mm. as us as the audience member to to watch the person die, right? So even in these two episodes, we got to really know Henry and Sam and really like them, and then they were gone. Yeah. So Compared to the game, because we get more time with them, they change it in the fact that they actually give us more information. Yeah. It makes the emotional punch that much more of a knockout. Yeah, it did. And that's that's what it, I mean. It's just such a gut punch. It's going to be a word that's used for the show, but I think symbolizes really what the impact that this story could have. I needed to take a warm bath <laughs> with Epsom salts after this episode. He really did. And then I came out and watched You've Got Mail starring yeah. <laughs> Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks because I just needed something silly to watch. <laughs> I was so emotionally disturbed and upset. Yeah, this, I mean, episode four was really like a breather almost in yeah. between three and five. <laughs> It was a bridge between tragedies. Yeah, and I, I have a feeling that that's going to be at the... The same pattern. Next episode is we, we know that he gets to his brother There's Tommy. There's gonna be snow. There's gonna be snow. <laughs> but then episode seven, gut punch. No. Episode eight, maybe a bridge. Episode nine, gut punch. Oh god. It's a trend. It's a trend. I can't. I <laughs> the can't. data analysis in me, it's like this is fact. This I, is gonna happen. I just want I I just want one more nice episode. <laughs> Can we I'm get sure one gonna, more nice episode? We'll see what happens with Tommy. <laughs> oh gosh. yeah. I mean it got announced that there is season two. This conversation has come up with Derek and I quite a bit. I, I'm curious where they go. Like, are we, they're wrapping up the full, the full first game in this one, which is incredible. But are we getting the second game right away? Are we getting the same characters playing everybody? Because if they go straight to that second one, Ellie's older. I'm just really excited for the show because i feel like after this season with the success and everything they can really well, go any way yeah maybe what they'll give us actually is happiness no, <laughs> well almost is the that maybe season two of the show is giving us the bridge between game one and game two maybe maybe they, they might have to write that whole story for us to finally get there i wonder if 
the decisions for what these creators and people that are working the show seem very intentional. And I'm curious if Neil Druckmann would want us to know that in between, Mm -hmm. like would what happens in two be as impactful if we have to wait as long? I know that I believe it was one of the creators for the show said that season or part two of the game would be multiple seasons. So they, they couldn't tell the full story of two in there. So we very much just might get two and then part or season season two, part two of part two of Last of Us would be the third. I got it. So I'm, I'm very <laughs> needless to say all this. I'm just trying to say is I'm very excited for the show. I don't think that there's been an IP that I've known prior to it getting a screen adaptation that I've been this super excited for or like they could do anything like I just I know what's happening, but I don't. And it's just exciting. History of the bloater is all next season. <laughs> We no. just <laughs> we live we live with an underground group of bloaters. No. Oh my god, imagine there's like a spin-off and it's like Kid Clicker. <laughs> but they make it like a sitcom like when they did the the Geico Caveman or whatever. It's like Daddy Bloater. Exactly. <laughs> M- mommy Clicker. Yeah. <laughs> Kid totally. Clicker. Can a bloater and a clicker make it work? Oh my we'll god. see on Bloaty Clicks. It's just a what if season. Of the last <laughs> exactly, of us. Exactly, totally. Man, so next episode we get Tommy, we get uh, some brotherly bonding, hopefully, time. We get snow. I, do you think we'll get like a little section of what Tom, how Tommy got there? 100%. Right? Or, That's going to be our flashback for the yeah, episode. They, they might introduce us to them prior to Joel and Ellie getting mm-hmm. to the point that they are now. I could see that happening. But hey, I've been wrong before. Not often. Oh, gosh. But wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you have that for now. <laughs> Um, I just, I don't know. I just can't, I don't know if I could take this anymore. It's just too emotional. Yeah. So sorry, not covering season two. But. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Evan, you want to come back? <laughs> Evan, we're waiting for you. But yeah, so that's it. Uh, you know, 10 out of 10. I feel like this, so far there's been no episodes that could do no wrong in this show. It's just still so strong halfway through season one. Absolutely. I mean... And, and you know, I, I've said before, I'm not really sort of a drama guy. One hour dramas are not my jam, but I, I have to keep coming back to it. It's just too, too good. Yeah, there's just too. And it's like sad because it's like I want to keep coming back to it, but I know it's going to be terrible. <laughs> well, we don't know. I'm signing myself. We might. For tears. We're going to get maybe we'll get more episodes like episode three. It was tragic, but it was just so beautiful. So beautiful. I I'm so Okay, we got to end it here because we're just going to keep talking about episodes we already <laughs> talked about. But again, I can't stress enough, listen to our Evan Bolter interview that we have because he tells us some interesting things about episode three and some of the uh, feathery things that happen. Oh, hint, hint. <laughs> yeah. But next week, episode six, right? Yeah. Yeah. Man. We'll see you then. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.